Greenway. I'm Cecile Riker, the Education Specialist for athens Clark County's Stormwater Management Program. Today, with the help of my friend and fellow water lover, Jackie Sherry, we will be showing you the journey that a raindrop takes once it lands here in Athens. We will be making different stops at several locations to illustrate how much movement happens when water goes from the sky, to the street, to the stream, to your house, and then back to the stream. We call this process the urban water cycle. I mentioned that I work for the county's stormwater management program. You may be thinking, what exactly does stormwater mean? Stormwater is any form of precipitation, rain, sleet, snow, or hail that comes down from the sky and hits Earth's surface. If that water happens to fall on top of a forested or grassy area, like the one pictured here, it can naturally infiltrate into the ground, eventually becoming groundwater, or it gets taken up by the roots of plants. It may even rain directly on top of a body of water. A small percentage of this water will evaporate back up into the atmosphere, but most of it will end up underground or in plants. In urban areas like Athens, however, stormwater coming down from the sky is more likely to hit the roof of a building, a street, a sidewalk, or a parking lot. We call these hard surfaces impervious because water cannot naturally absorb into them. Instead, the water runs off and can cause flooding if it has nowhere to go. As you probably guessed, we call this phenomenon stormwater runoff, and that water has the potential to carry different types of pollutants into our waterways. Most developed cities around the country have built stormwater systems to handle stormwater runoff. A stormwater system is a network of storm drains like the one you see here, pipes, and ditches that capture runoff and channel it into a nearby waterway or natural area. You can see some of this infrastructure above ground, like storm drains that have been installed along roads or in parking lots. Many of the pipes, however, run underground and eventually dump the stormwater into a stream or pond. Runoff has the potential to pick up many different things in its path from our streets to the stream, most of which are harmful pollutants. These pollutants can take many forms, including dog poop that hasn't been picked up, litter on the sides of a road or trail, or oil that's leaked from cars can get picked up by rain and carried into our streams and rivers. It's important to note that none of this water that goes through our stormwater system gets treated or cleaned before it hits a stream. Because of this, stormwater runoff is considered the number one cause of water pollution in the United States, and it has detrimental impacts on aquatic ecosystems and water quality as a whole. We consider stormwater runoff to be a non-point source of pollution because it's nearly impossible to pinpoint exactly where contaminants have come from once they're in a body of water. A point source of pollution, however, can be traced to one single source. So if a large industrial facility spilled oil directly into a creek, we would call that a point source. Nearly 70 miles of streams and rivers here in Athens are classified as impaired or polluted, meaning they do not meet certain water quality standards set forth by the state of Georgia. You'll learn more about how to conduct water quality sampling later in the afternoon. Now that we've discussed the various ways a raindrop might end up in a river, along with how it might get polluted, let's visit the drinking water treatment plant to see how it gets transformed into clean drinking water that we have access to at our homes. It's important to note that the cleaner our water is at the source, the easier and more cost-effective it is for our city to turn it into potable drinking water. Hi, I'm Jackie Sherry with the athens Clark County Public Utilities Department. The Public Utilities Department is responsible for the delivery of clean, safe water and its collection here in Athens. Whether you're washing your hands, taking a shower, or flushing a toilet, we are working hard to provide you this vital resource. My job as the Water Conservation Education Specialist focuses on water quantity, providing ways to conserve water at home, school, and local businesses. I wanna welcome you to the JG Beecham Water Treatment Plant. This is the only drinking water facility here in Athens and can clean up to 36 million gallons of water a day. This plant receives water from three sources, the Middle Oconee River, the North Oconee River, which we just saw with Cecile, and the Bear Creek Reservoir. The first stop for the raw water or the river water entering the facility is the rapid mix chamber, which is behind me. The rapid mix chamber is where we add in two different chemicals. The first is activated carbon. 
Activated carbon helps remove any of the bad tastes, odors, any algal toxins that could be in the water. The second is a chemical called alum. Alum is used as a coagulant, meaning it helps particles stick together. So it's going to help all the sand, silt, clay particles stick together in the water, clump together. Behind me is the rapid mix chamber. It's 15 feet deep and this is where there's a mixer in the middle turning to mix the activated carbon and alum with that raw river water. Now we're going to walk up and take a look at the rapid mix chamber. chambers. This is where the alum and the particles in the water have formed flock. Think like a flock of birds, a collection of something. This is a collection of those particles. They are going to become heavy in the water. The water flows to the sedimentation basin where it is kept very still to allow the flock to sink to the bottom which is then removed from the system. Water usually stays in this tank for about four hours. In the middle is the sludge sweep, which will push the sludge or the flock that is now at the bottom of the basin down a pipe, removing it from the water. The cleanest of the water is spilling over these weirs and heading to the next step of the process involving the filter system. These are the filters that we use to clean the water. It's a combination of sand and coal filters. The water will stay in here about eight hours and these filters are going to remove 99.9% .9 of any of the remaining flock that wasn't removed in the sedimentation basins. Next, the water flows by a bank of ultraviolet light bulbs. The water flows through 192 of these ultraviolet bulbs. If there are any contaminants, bacteria left in the water at this point, the UV rays disrupt the DNA of that big bacteria, inhibiting its ability to reproduce in the water. After UV disinfection, the water flows to the clear wells shown here, where lime, fluoride, a corrosion inhibitor, and sodium hypochlorite are added to produce finished water. Each of these clear wells can hold three and a half million gallons of water. Athens uses about 14 million gallons of water a day. So on site, we have about half of Athens supply of drinking water. One place we did not see is the laboratory. This is where we do the water quality testing. We test for pH, turbidity, hardness, alkalinity, ammonia, fluoride, and many others. The water is sometimes tested hourly and tested throughout the entire process that we saw today. The water must meet standards set by the Environmental Protection Division and Environmental Protection Agency. After the water is guaranteed to be the highest quality and safe for drinking, it is then going to travel through pipes underneath Athens to different homes, schools, and businesses. That's our distribution system. We have over 800 miles of pipes moving that clean water to you. After seeing what the water goes through, I hope you'll help me in conserving our water. Be smart about your water use. Simple actions like turning off the water when you brush your teeth, taking a shorter shower, and installing WaterSense labeled products can help us ensure we have plenty of water now and in the future in Athens. Welcome to the Cedar Creek Water Reclamation Facility. This facility receives wastewater from homes, schools, businesses, and reclaims, refreshes, and returns the water to the river. Wastewater is any used water. For example, the water from flushing the toilet, brushing your teeth, showering, 
washing clothes, washing dishes, all of that is considered wastewater. athens Clark County has three water reclamation facilities, which in total can clean up to 28 million gallons of water per day. Today, we are at the Cedar Creek Water Reclamation Facility, which cleans 4 million gallons a day. The first stop for the influent water or the water coming into the facility is Headworks. Here is the influent water. As the wastewater comes into the facility, it's going to pass through two screens to capture the larger items like plastic, trash, wood, lint, wipes, hair, and even smaller screens to capture particles like dirt, sand, clay, and gravel. These materials are ground up, compacted, and dropped into a collection box, which goes to the landfill. I'm about to show you the collection box. Again, this is where all the solid items are removed from the influent water arriving here at the facility. They are ground up, compacted, and dropped into this box. Let's go see what we can find. As you can see, more than just water ends up at this facility. Some of these items like hair, wipes, paper towels, and tissues do not break down in water and cause problems when they get to the facility. With that in mind, we have a motto at the Water Conservation Office. That is to follow the four P's of flushing. The only things that put, should be flushed down the toilet all start with the letter P. Can you guess them? P, poop, the only paper is toilet paper, and puke. Everything else should go into either the trash, recycling, or compost bin. Next, the water moves to the aeration basins, where we introduce microorganisms in air to the water. The addition of air to the water provides a perfect environment for the microorganisms to consume the contaminants that are in the water. They feed on the waste, transforming and breaking the waste down into a more treatable and less polluted form. This process removes ammonia, nitrogen, and phosphorus. While the microorganisms grow and reproduce, the wastewater is broken down into basic components like nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, and water. After the microorganisms have done their job, it's now time to remove them. To help us with this, we use a chemical called alum. You might remember that from the drinking water tour facility. Alum is a coagulant that's going to help the microorganisms and any other solid materials clump together in the water. That happens in these clarifying basins. The microorganisms clump together and at this point we call it sludge. The sludge is heavy and will actually sink in this water. is the UV treatment. The water will flow past UV light bulbs. If there are any remaining bacteria still in the water, the UV will sterilize the bacteria, meaning that they cannot reproduce once they get back into the river. After the water flows through the light bulbs, it will go down a series of steps to add oxygen back into the water. Then it will travel about a half a mile through a pipe and end up in the Oconee River.
here is a sample of the effluent water, the water that is returned to the river. As you can tell, it looks very different than the influent water that arrived at the facility. This water goes through several tests, just like on the drinking water side at our water quality laboratory. Once the water meets certain standards set by the Environmental Protection Division and Environmental Protection Agency, it is allowed to be returned to the river. And now the water has found its way back to the river. Thank you for following along with this journey through the urban water cycle. As a community, it's important that we all help protect the quality of water at the source, as well as take steps at home to conserve water. Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoyed the trip.